excited for you to experience the words from my guest today. We have been friends. I have been friends with this person and his beautiful wife for 50 years. That's a very long time, but that's a long time to watch someone's life. It's a long time to experience their ministry. And one thing I would say about him is that I know when I sit down in my chair or if I listen to him on a, a recording or on YouTube, I know that I'm going to hear something and in one hour, I'm going to have been changed. I'm going to have something corrected. I am going to be more excited about my life than, with the Lord than I was before. That is how reliable he is as he brings the word. So not to put too much pressure on him, please welcome Dennis Burke. Well, hello, Kelly, and hey. hello, everyone. I'm so glad I'm here with you. Me too. I love you and Vicki so much, and I've watched your life. You know, I, 50 years ago, was a little girl, and that's all I'll say about that. But No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, I was, but I really have watched you guys, because y'all were that, y'all weren't old either. You were just ahead of me. Right. New, young married, coming right. out of the Jesus movement in California. Right. You know, one thing I see back then that I don't see so much of now, and I just want to maybe say it's time to see this again, is how people quickly became experts in the Word. Yeah. You guys came out, you were like a drug addict, and then you weren't. Right. You were a drug addict, and then you were a preacher. I mean, but now we want people to like be 20 years experience before I listen to you. Mm -hmm. Be 20 years of like in the Word before you have any value to basic Christian society. Right. I mean, do you see that? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And, you know, I remember when we first, Vic and I both, first gave our lives to the Lord. It was 1971, and it was that Jesus movement time. And we were carrying a lot of baggage, like everybody does, into, into things. But there were certain things about us and about the, really what was happening at that time um, that looking back, you realize, were... De defining aspects of what made things uh, alive and so rich and, and caused you to excel in things that uh, in looking at the way it's happening for some today, I'm not recognizing quite as much, but it's, it's gaining ground. Mm -hmm. But uh, there were certain aspects, I guess, that I've tried to identify and really meditate on to to know what was going on in those earliest young days when you really come into the kingdom knowing nothing, of course. And uh, we came out of the drug scene and came out of all the heavy rock and roll type stuff of the day. And, and that Jesus movement had been going since the late 60s. But for us, it was 1971. And we, we uh, realized that there was a a def defining desire for certain things. And one was that we would enter into the presence of God. And it really came about for us in the music that started to emerge, the contemporary Christian music that began. Uh, Maranatha music started in 71, actually, historically is when it began. And it was simple, simple worship music and simple messages of music that just captured our soul. It wasn't high tech. It was very low tech, actually. You know? Beautiful guitar. <laughs> but great <laughs> guitar and lyrics that yeah. were just rich. And so, uh, you know, that really captured us. Music had been very important to me. Uh, the rock music spoke to me in wrong ways in a lot of cases, of course. But uh, having that element as a part of what I could do to enter into the presence of God. It just, mm -hmm. it just uh, captured my soul and made it rich. And, and so there was that desire for the presence of God. And not just on a weekend basis or a Sunday service or a convention basis, but it was a daily uh, quest and desire that you had. And of course, there were ups and downs as a young Christian, you, even an old Christian, you know. Uh, there's, there's times that are high and lows and you're going through these various things. But uh, 
that was really vital to us uh, that we would have times of worship. And what we found is, uh, like I said, it wasn't just for church service times. Uh, there was a small group in the church we were at. Uh, I was kind of the first long hair ex druggy type to come to that church. And, uh, but God was doing something and bringing, bringing things about where um, a number of us had kind of gravitated together and kind of come out of a similar sort of stuff. And that's when I met Vicki, actually, uh, was in that first few months of knowing the Lord um, at that church. We didn't know each other prior to that. But we, uh, we would get together on off nights, so to speak, nights that were not church nights or nothing was happening, but we'd find a place or a way to get together and just share worship, fellowship, um, and encourage one another and, and just uh, be around the body of Christ, you know? Well, you, you just described, and I've lived with the Lord and grown up hearing you, growing up hearing really such passionate people for the Lord, such people who have dedicated their entire life to do what the Lord asked them to do. And I'm, I'm really blessed that in that circle of people who have taught me and walked in front of me, there's no division about, you know, oh, I'm going to go sin or I'm going to, you know, there really oh, wasn't. Yeah. No, there's just such a wholehearted hunger for the Lord. And I do believe that define, that's one of the defining personal behavior markers that I see in the people that we've come up in. And, but, but beyond that, in the last 10 years, there has been a hunger for his presence that has just invaded my soul to the place. And, and worship was just as much a part. It's like you met that, you met music for what it was intended to. It was Absolutely. always intended for that. That's exactly right. And you right. finally got in a place in music where it was able to do something in the core of you and draw you into his presence. And I feel that, I feel that same thing and that that hunger for his presence that demands satisfaction and yet somehow can't. <laughs> yeah. you, you, the more you have of him, the more you just, and I, I believe that that holy hunger and a holy dissatisfaction with where you've been, no matter how great it was, is here. Yeah. And I love the, the title of your book, The Satisfied Life. Yeah, right. And I've watched you and Vicki not stay still satisfied to be who you were, but even as challenges came up, you just like dove into him to come out of those and find that place in his presence again. You know, you do have to find it too. And uh, you have to press in for this. It's not uh, just waiting on God like you're waiting for a bus or something. It's, mm -hmm. it's entwining yourself with him and taking the time uh, in worship and in the word, you know, we found also in those earliest days, we had a such a passion for the word. We wanted to be in a Bible study, wanted to learn. It was all about discovery, wasn't it? In yeah. the early days, it's about discovering who God is and discovering who you are and knowing that in his presence and in his word, you're going to discover things about him or about yourself that are designed to bring a satisfaction to your soul and redefine who you really are. And it brings the definition of who you are now that you're in Christ. And, uh, and that is really paramount for people to really come to know who they actually are. And so uh, that's what we had to press in. We had to walk away from who we were. Yeah and all of the baggage that it created and traumas that we had gone through and different issues, you know, that are just uh, real. And uh, uh, too many times I, I know that people have come into Christ and seen that in themselves as being kind of the end, yeah. that now they are finished with certain things, and which is true. But then now they're in Jesus and everything is is going to be all right. Well, that's true, but it's not automatic. Well, I think, Dennis, that we misunderstand where we think that it's outside of those circumstances that we find him, but it's really inside those 
um, traumatic, hurtful, troubling, irritating um, circumstances or people, whatever, or both. It's inside those things that you are closest to being open to finding and opening up your heart to him. And I, I really just want you right now to not think, oh, that's a long ways for me because I'm so troubled. He's near the brokenhearted. That's a special promise. And, and even as I wanted to break in here to say to you, really, like my dad used to say, get your catchers out. Open your ears. Have ears to hear, as Jesus said, because th what Dennis is sharing today is not for the perfected high mountain times. I mean, sometimes we fall from that place because we forget these things. And we fall, we end up on the ground. And we need to hear these things. So just, it's in your mess. It's in your trouble. It's in your, I don't know what to do. I'm not having answered prayer. It's in that place that you step into what Dennis is saying. Absolutely. Am I right? Absolutely. So really just share that with them because that's what we need to hear. Well, and that, that's really the Christian life, live in the Christian life. And with the kind of success that God really said we could is... Uh, is for uh, the messy life that we've been living <laughs> and to have the Spirit of God. Messy life. Have the Spirit of God. Is that your next interject. book, The Messy that's, Life? <laughs> that's, uh, that's a thought right that's there. But, um, you know, and life is messy, you know, and it, it, you'd like to think it's all perfected. And you see people that have been walking with Jesus for a long time. And uh, sometimes it feels, I know I've had people, uh, say to me, Vicki said, people say to her, well, you've just never had problems like I have. Well, the real truth is uh, life is messy. We've all come out of stuff. Vicki's Vicky's history, she came out of a very abusive household and family. I came out of issues uh, in my house. Everybody faces issues. And uh, so regardless of how deep the trouble is, the answer is right here, right now. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit has come in order to bring some real so solutions and answers to you. And I believe the Spirit of God wants to reach right into your soul right this minute and let His presence and the authority of His Word come alive in you so that there is a genuine breakthrough and a redefining of what's been going on so that you can start to embrace who you are and who Jesus has made you to be. And uh, this is a moment for it. I believe this program is, is a moment for it. And where you're watching this, uh, these various messages that come are designed to do something permanent to bring victory and help and hope into really tough times. I think for me, uh, in first coming to know the Lord, and in those early days, there was, these things were kind of set in place for us. And God used your family to do this for us in a huge way. God joined us to uh, uh, understand that the authority of God's word and the covenant that God had given to us through Jesus uh, paid the price for us to not have to pay our own price that it was all about what Jesus had done. Uh, you know, they used to call us Jesus freaks. <laughs> and part of that, I used to think, was because we kind of looked a little bit odd <laughs> compared to society in those days. But it really wasn't that. There was, there was, you found they used that term Jesus freak for some that were in the church house, some that were even in the White House. Wasn't well, the president at that point, but there were some in the White House. And what it was really all about is that Jesus was first place in everything that we were doing. We would carry our Bibles. Many of us would carry our Bibles all the time, any place, uh, or speak the words, quote scriptures. And it wasn't just about quoting scriptures, but man, scripture had come alive to us. It just came out. And it just came out. And so uh, being that Jesus was at the forefront of everything for us, it wasn't just a weekend event or just something we'd added on to our troubled life. It was real shifts in our life so that we were always looking to Jesus and, and wanting his input and his help right now in the presence of God and for the word to come alive. And so um, that's what is, is reigniting in these days. 
these issues that were so big for us in those days, it's not just about the history, it's about the destiny that we have right now in Jesus to see the presence of God empower us and, and welcome us and feed our soul with peace and a well, sense of well-being. It's about the authority of the word answering and being a source of, of power and strength from us. And it's really about the Holy Spirit. We, we used to have, uh, when we would get together as just very young Christians now, but we had an expectation for the Holy Spirit to do His work in one way or another when we were together. In that time of worship, when we would get around the Word and, and talk in these Bible studies we would have, uh, the Holy Spirit would come and do a work in people. Some would have a fresh joy. Others would, you know, get into tears. And, and you know, the Spirit of God hits people in all different unique ways. And, um, and we have that expectation, though, that when we came together, something, you know, was going to take place here. Because that, you were experiencing it. We were experiencing it. There this. has been too long. I feel like I want to be alarm clock today. And like Paul said, wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time it to begin to live your life, live the most. In Ephesians, it says, uh, make the most of every opportunity. It says, wake up, sleeper, rise up. We're in that time again, and the parallels are so strong. Parallels are huge. We're in a time of war. Mm -hmm. We're in a time of personal trauma in the youth so much that drugs or the occult or the stuff about identity is just the most identity crisis, way worse than it was. Yes. But it's such a parallel. But it's, I think Satan sends those things when it begins to smell of revival, but also revival comes to those hearts because you get desperate. Yes. And you become, you realize I think we get so numb and I think we've had answered prayers for so long that were so easy. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that was my experience mm -hmm. of like, mm -hmm. you know, a child's in the hospital. Well, I know what the word says. No, and it was is. just like unfolded in front of you. But we're just in this time to wake up even from that, the purpose of that those days, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. those had a purpose of strengthening, of experiencing, yeah. but as we grow to another level, I think as you grow to another level, as you go in high school and you've been in middle school and work is harder, your grades to go down, <laughs> <laughs> your success levels go down. But when you're, as they rise, I feel like we're on the rise. I believe we are on the rise. We have to be because the intensity of these days you know, has, everybody feels it, it has increased this intense uh, struggle that's going on and the pressure and the voices out there of all different kinds of things. And yet, you know, we know that we know that we are in significant days when the Holy Spirit is doing something uh, worldwide that is remarkable. And, um, He's always been around, so that's not new. And the desire for revival is not new. Uh, but there's an intensity and a, a breaking out of these things that is happening, not just in a single location as revivals have been, you know, historically, but this is happening globally, where in nations all over the world... Suppressed nations. And yes... Uh, bound nations and, and uh, hostile nations, hostile to Christianity. But uh, these are the days when, you know, you can't help but believe that, uh, you know, we're in the last days in, in one way or another, whatever that means, which has been the case since the day of Pentecost. That was called the beginning of the last days. Anyway. We were the last second. Yeah, but it feels like <laughs> As that. God's time goes. <laughs> but, you know, um, Vic and I were just talking about this, and, and she reminded me of something that came alive in her, uh, that the Holy Spirit spoke to her back in 1989. She was in prayer about revival in the nation, particularly over some specific things, and uh, praying and pressing into God in this intimate time with the Lord. And the Holy Spirit spoke something that, uh, you know, was, uh, you know, kind of eye-opening, you know, really eye-opening at that moment. 
when he said this to her, he said, uh, there will be no revival in the land until this land stops slaughtering the unborn. Mm. Now, that took the whole thing to a whole different place. But suddenly you realize that there is conflict that has a direct impact on how things are going to go in the days of the Holy Spirit pouring out. And so it helped us to focus on a specific, and not that alone, but it was a number of years before that changed. In fact, it was June of, of uh, 2022, not long ago, that the Roe v. Wade uh, decision had been overturned. So it and seemed Court. so impossible. It just seemed Up like it would never happen. in heaven, it just seemed so impossible. It did, didn't it? It did. And yet, and yet we knew on, on the inside that this was a pivotal, important, powerful issue that had to be shifted. And uh, something began to shift then in the way of this outpouring that we've been knowing was on the agenda, but it began to just intensify. And uh, you started to see things. And I believe people started to get a new sense of urgency that they needed to share Jesus. They needed to stand for their own victories on a new level. They needed to see themselves uh, uh, being useful and being a part of the real program of who God uh, has called us all to be, that we are all part of the ministry of reconciliation, every one of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, every person has a part to play, and we do it in prayer, and, we, and yet oftentimes we do it, uh, you know, in sharing directly with people and maybe by text or by, uh, you know, a phone call or just, you know, a, a good word to somebody. Hey, you know, you know, I'm a Christian. I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. you I, I feel like that there, just as we're talking, I, when that happened, just looking back, there was a boldness that seemed to come on many in the body of Christ to be more open, to be more verbal, to be more active, but also... I had not thought about it, but with the overturn of that, the sin abounding, the attacks on children, the attacks on identity, the lies that are just people that are accepting as though that makes sense. And most of us are going, how can you even think that? That abounding sin kind of got turned up when, I never thought about that, but when abortion yeah. was overturned, all that began to turn up. And... I think there's an opportunity. There's two doors. People, we can walk through a door of fear that it's going to not change or that yes. it's going to overcome us. Or maybe even the the things you've experienced in your own life seem like, well, that got, I feel like I've had a lot of challenges even since then that have puzzled me. But it says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. And I, I believe that Satan wants to grab our hearts with fear. And the word says that he came, came down knowing that he had but a short time. Yes. And I, maybe that was a switch, that, that moment where that was overturned, opened the door to God, but Satan tried to come into that open door too. Yes. Uh, can you address them with fear? We don't have a whole lot of time left. I, exactly I want to give you right. plenty of time to make that, help us make that shift out of that worried space yes. and see what God is saying. Yes. You well, can. you know, that is you know, so vital to re recognize that right now there are so many voices, so many distractions, so many things strategies to grab your attention. You know, Jesus talked about that soil. Uh, one of the four soils that he talked about in that parable of the sower sowing the word was that one of them was a, uh, a soil that had seed that was bearing fruit, but the weeds grew in and choked the word. And so many people have had the word really being choked out of them over fear and the cares of this world, the distractions of the age. And I think that terminology is vital uh, to recognize that, man, we have so many things that are, that are issues that are distracting people and grabbing people's attention and sowing the seeds of fear over these days. And I've got a word for you that you don't have to be afraid 
that God has an answer that is overwhelming to the kingdom of darkness and that the Spirit of God will overwhelm you with the confidence to know that Jesus is Lord. He's not only the answer for you going to heaven, but he's, in, he's the answer for you dealing with these strategies that Satan's trying to use against you, whatever it is. And so I want you to recognize that in Christ, you have been given the right to receive big time, and this is that moment, that in the name of Jesus, you have been defined in Christ, in Him, to be made right and righteous in His sight, to know that you belong to God and that there's healing for your body, there's restoration for your family, there's restoration for your own soul, and these are those days. So in the name of Jesus, I release that to you yes. by the authority of His name that there would be a flood of knowing that sense of well-being and victory that comes from Jesus, that you are one of the Jesus people of this day, and Satan is not going to steal that from you in any way, shape, or form. We res refuse to be stolen from in Jesus' name. Just go ahead and say it. I refuse to be stolen from. I refuse to be stolen from. This is my day of victory. This is my day of And I receive it in Jesus' name. <laughs> I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, I just wanted to, do you hear? You, I'm going to take off on something. You said, you're like, this is the answer. This is not just the answer to going to heaven. This is the answer to how you go to the grocery store. How you send your kids to school. I, this, I was, when you were talking, it says secrets for redefining your life. We have known what it meant to be children of God. And he is in these last days, according to his word, redefining in our heart what it means to be sons, what it means to be daughters of God. That, that redefines how we go about life, how we go to the grocery store, who you are when you head into that doorway. Who Satan is a defeated foe under your feet. This is your day now of victory. I want to invite you to do something that can be really life-changing. I want you to become a partner with this ministry. God has given Kelly a very powerful message and mandate, and it takes people joining with her to do it. And so I want you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you to become a partner with this ministry financially, sowing seeds of prayer and finance for real victories to come in Jesus' name.